Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Issa and welcome to my channel. I live in New York City, so today we're gonna go through my apartment hunting process. What I did, how I organized my tours, everything from moving here and having the initial gut feeling that you want to move to the city to finding an apartment and being relieved that you got one. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is what I looked for in my apartment. For your career, what you might prioritize is so different from anybody else. You might prioritize your office location, the commute, you might prioritize the lighting, you might prioritize the living space, if you have a pet, you might prioritize the safetyness if you're a woman. But the point is that you're gonna have different priorities for everybody else. So for me, what I was really looking for was natural lighting, the safety and convenience of the location, so accessibility to trains, storage space is a big one for me, and having that extra space to film is important. Also having a doorman is really important to me because sometimes I get home late at night and I want that extra safety. This isn't typically how it is for everybody. So I actually went on five apartment tours with my really good friend, Tyler. You guys should check out his channel. It's right here if you guys are interested and also in the description, but he works full time at LinkedIn. Tyler also assists on production and he does shoots and has a very creative side. So we align in multiple ways in terms of like great lighting and location but also we just were looking for two bedrooms together so this is the whole rundown also i just want to make a disclaimer that i'm not trying to glamorize living in new york i decided not to put locations just for my personal safety reasons but i am telling you my overall opinions of this apartment process and at the end if you are interested in moving to new york i have some tips for you so let's move on with the rest of the video okay number one the very first thing I did with Tyler was we organized spreadsheets. He tackled the Google Doc spreadsheet and I did my Google Calendar. What I did to help the tours was, for example, on Sunday, I booked them all back to back. I started looking two months before. Even previously at my old apartment, I was looking for an apartment two months before moving out because I was interested in having my own space. And then for this next chapter, my move out was in August, but I started looking as early as May and June. In New York, you have to apply, put the deposit down, be out of your apartment, find your roommates, be in the new place. Everything has to be done within two weeks. And that's just the turnaround time because it's a very populated city and all the apartments are very high in demand. So it's pretty cutthroat. The first apartment I toured was a townhouse and the total cost was $5,000. I love this space. It was newly renovated and it also felt like very residential. There were good restaurants nearby. It felt very welcoming, which I really prioritized coming from San Francisco. But the only thing was that there were no closets. There was no dishwasher. You had to get your own washer and dryer, no AC unit. So a lot of technical things that would be additional fees. But overall, a beautiful kitchen. I love the kitchen, the window. We're on our way to our next showing. What did you think of that apartment? I thought it was all right. It didn't have a dishwasher, didn't have closets. We didn't it, even notice it didn't have closets until we were like. Yeah. <laughs> it had one busted AC unit that he claims is gonna be replaced. We all know that's a lie. Yeah. And we, also, we all like, know the tricks of the, the New York broker. <laughs> they can't fool us. He's like, yep, only one month broker fee. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's the Lulu. Oh, well, she's like looking at us. <laughs> she's judging us. No, it's fine. I'm good for it's so hot. It's, it's literally so hot. like 90 degrees. We had to we had to do a little stop for a matcha break. Hojicha. Minus Yuzu. And then the apartment we're walking to next. So this next listing is pretty interesting because it's always on Street Easy. And then if you look up like Google reviews, like it has the shittiest reviews. <laughs> so I'm like very like is this one just one for the tour for fun yeah it's for, <laughs> but it's supposed to be like a brand new building with amenities right. so like i gotta we gotta we're the boots on the ground we gotta see it we're gonna get up. down to the business gotta, yes we're detectives today <laughs> the building yeah with the shitty google reviews yeah <laughs> i'm scared just giving let me up charge you $200 for an amenity fee. <laughs> the amenities in question. The next apartment was, I like to call the catfish amenity apartment, okay? This was about $8,000. And tell me why this location was a 15 minute walk from the train. 15 minutes, 
in theory is not a long walk but thinking about it in november to february that is a long walk in the snow so that was not ideal it was a beautiful building though there were lots of residents you know and they were really trying to sell the pool the basketball court at this point, I don't even remember what was inside because there was so much. There were Pilates rooms. There was a lifeguard at the pool, even though it was two feet, but those were also additional fees for an $8,000 apartment. I did appreciate the natural bright lighting inside though and the big kitchen. It just wasn't the right fit considering the convenience and the location. Okay, the next apartment was 4,400 and it was a two bedroom in a loft style apartment. This one had so much character. I loved the big windows. I love the exposed brick. I love apartments that keep the integrity and the history of the building. So it's next to one of my favorite restaurants in Brooklyn. It called Acre. So I could just see myself going outside, getting a bento for lunch. I just wanted to imagine the lifestyle that I would live within the building, which I also think is important. Not just looking at the building itself, but imagining how you're going to live and implement your daily routine inside. So I loved it. It's just that for the space, a studio would have been more worth the price because it was pretty much the same, but the bedrooms were closet sized almost. So you could fit a bed into each of the bedrooms but it would have been a better deal to just leave it all open in a studio style. The next apartment is a one bedroom. This one is an example of an amenity filled building that isn't catfished, but will literally rob you for your money because what the f So this one had insane amenities. They were like, this is our own Equinox. For a whopping deal of 200 a month, you can get your own Equinox. Babe, if I wanted to go to Equinox, I would just get a membership myself. Walking to the Equinox is the exercise, okay? And I don't need to do that for $200. Was it beautiful? Yes. Was I going to pay $9,000 for a two bedroom? No, that was insane. At this point, this apartment was just, I was just looking at it for fun, just to show you how, you know, the New Yorkers be living in their mid thirties. The Asian in me needed to get something that was worth paying for. like. Thinking about $9,000, the last apartment that I want to show you guys was the most realistic New York apartment that I've seen in a great location in Brooklyn. The walk-up was $5,000 for a two bedroom, which was similar to the first one, but there were AC units installed. The location was great. There was a big kitchen, newly renovated. I think for me, this space just didn't get enough natural lighting. I also didn't get the best footage, apologies, because the tenant was still living inside. So I didn't want to like invade in her personal space, but they had a lovely pet that they were watching. Each roommate had their own bathroom, which was really nice. So I just wanted to finish this video talking about my personal journey and I guess overall advice and things that like I really, really looked for. The most important for anyone when finding their apartment is to prioritize their mental health, not just convenience and what makes sense. What would be ideal for your situation? Whether it's related to how far you have to commute for work, whether it's related to how much kitchen space you need for your Asian seasonings, whether it relates to how many roommates you have and how well your dynamic is. These are all really important things to consider before settling on a neighborhood, which is why it's so important to look ahead and to also just be ready whenever you want to pounce on an apartment. The money you'll need to have saved up is quite a lot. You need your security deposit, you need your first month's rent, you need an application fee. You sometimes have an attorney fee or 15% broker's fee that is worth one month of rent or 15% of the whole lease. And then you also have your initial deposit, which goes towards your rent. That can be a lot of money. So I would suggest saving money that's worth about four months of your rent or more, just so that you can feel comfortable making the jump, moving to a bigger space or moving to New York in general. So you'll need your employment letters. So that's like a recommendation or a CPA letter from your accountant and proof of income. You'll also need your tax returns, your for three months worth of pay stubs, I actually got asked for six months worth of pay stubs. You also need your ID or passport. You need also a landlord letter. Sometimes it's not as important, but it's all necessary. And then you need 
months worth of bank statements. So I believe in New York, you have to make 40 times your rent, which is why it can be really hefty and living with roommates also makes it better. Yeah, those are gonna be all the documents you need. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any further questions, let me know. Thank you.